Welcome to part 2 of series 1. Series 1 is divided into 3 parts. I cut it every 15 minutes. The reason is for you not to become bored because it is a technical topic. You need time to understand and relate what was discussed. So we need to cut this webinar. Let us proceed to part 2, the arrangement of the code. If you open the table of contents of PEC, which a serious learner needs to do every time, you can see that chapter 1 to 4 applies generally to all electrical installation. It is about general requirements, wiring and protection, wiring methods and material, equipment for general use. The next chapters 5, 6, and 7 are related to special occupancies special equipment and special conditions that supplement and modify chapter 1 to 4. Chapter 8 is about communication system. It is not subject to the requirements of chapter 1 through 7 except when the requirement is specifically referenced chapter 8. Okay? These chapters apply to communication system. Ito yung chapter na gustong gusto ng ating mga kapatiran na ECE to be removed to our PEC code. But since Chapter 8 is started with the electrical engineering profession, we need to protect it by learning it in details. Makialam tayo sa discussion na related sa communication system. Huwag nating hayaan na mawala yan sa atin tulad ng illumination design na mostly architect na ang gumagawa sa ngayon using pre-software na Dialux and Relux. Nakakalungkot lang, so simple electrical subjects natin na illumination, pinabayaan na natin. So, please support any electrical engineers that discuss illumination design. Alam nyo ba na ang bayad sa isang illumination design ranges from 120K to 500K? Example, store illumination design, mall illumination design, road and superhighway illumination design. Dating trabaho ng electrical engineer ngayon, nasa ibang profession na. Okay, let's move on. Chapter 9 is about watercraft. Before, this chapter is separated. It is Volume 2 of PEC dedicated to watercraft. Just to let you know, I am doing my research on this kahit uh, hindi pa masyado akong familiarized dito. I let you know if madami na akong nakausap na mga watercraft engineers because I'm going to decode it. As an RME and REE and PEE, we need to own it and learn it by heart. Chapter 10 was dedicated to tables. It was applicable as a reference in the code and we need to make sure each RME and REE and I are also well versed in looking for values in the tables and we must know its details. Last on the structure and organization, we have annexes which you can read independently. Annexes are not mandatory, but they support and supplement and explain some part of the code. You can read it independently and learn how it is applied. As a serious code user and learner, when you start studying PEC, you need to know how it is structured or outlined and how the topics are organized by the great minds of the IIEE PEC committee who arranged the code. Kahit ako nahihirapan kasi... Sobrang daming numbers, right? I found NEC numbering so easy. But in PEC, ang dami nating articles and sections. But I need to make sure I can work my way around it without too much complaining about how it is written. This is how a serious learner should approach it, okay? You need to build a basic building block of how the code is made so that it will be easy for us to search specific topics in the code and you know how it is arranged. This should be the right approach of a serious code user like you. The code is arranged in the following. Table of contents, chapters, under chapters are articles, sections, informational notes or fine print notes, exceptions, tables and figures, appendix, and index. Here's how the table of contents look like. The table of contents display the layout of the chapters, articles, as well as page number. As a serious user of the code, this table of content is very useful and should be referred to periodically 
to look for different topics you want. When attempting to locate the rules for a specific situation, the code user often go to a uh, table of contents to quickly find the specific PEC rule that apply to his needs. There are 10 chapters in PEC 2017 and chapter 9 is the code for watercraft. In NEC, where we align our code, watercraft like ship and boats or yacht is not included only the code for floating buildings. That means in the Philippines, there are areas for electrical engineers to learn more about electrical design and provision for a watercraft, diba? I mentioned this already. There are 10 chapters in PEC. Chapter 1 is the general requirement. 2 is wiring and protection. 3 is wiring methods and materials. 4 is equipment for general use. 5 is special occupancies. 6 is special equipment. 7 is special conditions, 8 is communication system, and 9 is watercraft, and 10 is tables. Let us dissect the table of contents. Let us see the content of a chapter. In chapter 1, we have 5 articles. Article 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.0. As you can see, tumalun tayo, di ba? From article 1.3 to article 1.10. This is normal. Probably, we have some items for development in the future where you can add from 1.4 to 1.9. My point here is to look at the structure under Chapter 1. We have 5 articles. Now, let's look for Chapter 2. Chapter 2, which is dedicated for wiring and protection, we have 11 articles. That's Article 2.0, 2.10, 2.15, 2.25, 2.30, 2.40, 2.50, 2.80, 2.85, 2.90. .80, to give you how it is arranged, I use NEC to compare our code. Let us see the difference and similarities. As you can see, PEC has 11 articles in Chapter 2, while NEC has 9 articles under Chapter 2. Notice the articles. We have Articles 2.10 from Branch Circuits while 210 in NEC. 2.5 for Grounding and Binding while 250 in NEC. And we have also an extra article 2.90. What does it mean if you are a serious code user? When you study PEC, you can also study NEC. It has a similar application, only the voltage level was different. When you understand one, you can also understand the others. For now, as a recommendation to the IIE committee, there should be a guide to explain how every chapter is structured to guide the practitioner. Just to let you know, I do really spend a lot of time comparing and contrasting, deciphering how we can easily understand our code. I hope you are beginning to see how our code is structured. Let us go with Chapter 3, with the same approach we've done in Chapter 2. Chapter 3 is dedicated to wiring methods and materials. We have 45 articles from pages 153 to 278. It is almost 125 pages. It will take you 25 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. Be careful also, you can find out that Chapter 2 ends on page 159 Yet, Chapter 3 is start on 153. So, may mga typo error lang sa table of contents and you can find that many as you read PEC 2017. Sometimes, you can see puto lang isang article at bitin pero when you look at NEC, meron pa siyang kadugtong. That's okay. I know some correction was already issued by the committee. And Chapter 4 is dedicated to equipment for general use. So we have 21 articles there from pages 279 to 404, almost 125 pages. It will take you 25 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. Okay? And chapter 5 is dedicated to special occupancies. So we have 27 articles there from pages 405 to 580, almost 175 pages. Uh, it will take you 35 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. 
chapter 6 is dedicated to special equipment. And we have 27 articles there from pages 581 to 696. It is almost 115 pages. It will take you 23 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. Chapter 7 is dedicated to special condition. We have 15 articles from pages 697 to 766, almost 69 pages. And it will just take you only 14 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. Chapter 8 is dedicated to special condition. We have 5 articles from pages 767 to 816, almost 49 pages. And it will take you 10 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. Chapter 9 is dedicated to water crops. We have 35 articles there, many, from pages 817 to 931, almost 114 pages, and it will take you 23 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. Appendices have 8 topics, from pages 946 to 1081. It is almost 135 pages and it will take you 27 days to read if your target is 5 pages per day. Table in chapter 10 which you can use for references in values you want to look. I didn't include it in my counting but you need to spend time on it also, okay? Overall, including chapter 1 and chapter 2 which is 152 pages and you can read it for 30 days. We can complete the Philippine Electrical Code in almost 212 days or 7 months. That's on the assumption that we read it 5 pages per day straight, even Saturday and Sunday. Wow, great diba, great challenge. You have to start now. We have a minimum of 7 months to read the Philippine Electrical Code. If each chapter of the PEC was assigned to each IIEE chapter to develop materials, we have a lot of IIEE chapters, we can divide it, right? Once the material are developed, all speakers will rotate to all IIEE chapters, then possible in one year, all members of the IIEE will have a grasp of the PEC, and development will continue if it was sustained that way, wherein every year, it's one of the program of IIEE chapter president. Do you think it's possible? I think it is. Imagine, my program ng isang presidente ng IIEE chapter when he sit down in the position. Okay? Okay, 15 minutes pass by. We cut this presentation for you to have some time to think and relax before proceeding with our continuation, part 3. Once you completed this series, an e-certificate of completion is available for you. You need to send me a personal message in my messenger because there is a requirement on how to get the e-certificate that you can use for self-application of CPD point. Don't worry, it's free. And as a proof that you already completed it, you just need to comply some uh, questions. And you can watch YouTube playlist about understanding PEC Series 1. See you on part 3 of Series 1. We will discuss sections, organizations, tables and figures, fine print notes and exceptions, appendices, and the summary of Series 1. Take your coffee break as we end this part 2 of Series 1. For now, you can subscribe to this channel to keep you updated or you can visit my Facebook page and like us to support the development of the material in understanding the Philippine Electrical Code. See you in part 3. Thanks for watching.